Hi guys, today we are going to cover uh, the preparation tips for CFA level 1 and we are going to split it into two videos. In the first video, we are going to cover all the subjects in session 1 or the morning session, which are essentially quantitative methods, ethics, financial reporting and analysis and economics and the balance in the second uh, in the next video, we're going to cover the second session. And it's important that you understand this because the first session, which has four subjects, has 50% of the weightage, whereas the second session, which has six subjects, also has 50% of the weightage. So with that, uh, let's jump into this. First subject, quantitative methods. Here we have two essential tips for you. Number one, do not skip time value of money. Time value of money is uh, almost a short, short question. And it's better to learn the concept, understand the concept rather than learning, uh, rote learning the formula. So for example, at Zell, we try to ensure that in the beginning when we, when we teach quantitative methods, we first explain the concept, we derive the formula based on understanding of the class. And then that's how they understand what the formula is. So till date, if they ever have to apply the concept, they don't have to remember the formula. They can apply it based out of conceptual understanding. Similarly, tip number two, hypothesis testing and probabilities. Uh, these in your textbook, when you read, they seem, ex they, they seem extremely daunting because of these complex symbols that come about and things like that. But if you break it down, sit by yourself, sit in class and logically try to understand every step, uh, it might take a little time, but once it clicks, then it's relatively easy to solve any questions. And then these questions, again, are relatively short, short in the exam. So, uh, one, don't skip time value of money and B, don't get overwhelmed with uh, hypothesis testing and probabilities. So, that was about quants. Quants is around 8 to 12 percent uh, in terms of weightage. So, guys, if you have more questions on things like the eligibility criteria for CFA, the common questions that we get are on other preparation tips, on uh, how much time it takes to prepare and just details of CFA overall. Uh, first of all, please post it in the comments. Secondly, you can read the, uh, you can reach out to us on the details mentioned here. And lastly, we also have a form in the description which you can fill and we will have our experts reach out to you. Now coming to ethics. Uh, ethics, first of all, has a higher weightage. It's close to uh, 15 to 20%. And the thing about ethics is when, when somebody is thinking about studying and preparing for CFA, they think ethics is just there in the way it's supposed to, you know, let, let's get done with the numerical kind of uh, concepts and subjects first. Huge mistake, especially for level one. So here are two tips for ethics. Tip number one, you will never be able to pass the ethics module or the ethics portion of the exam with just one reading. If you think that, huh, I understand what I'm reading, that is definitely not sufficient. It, ethics requires multiple readings and solving multiple questions again and again till you get the hang of it. Also, the tricky part for CFA level one, especially with ethics is that in the MCQs, the three options they give you for any question, the answers are very, very close. So option A, option B, option C, it will take you a lot of practice to identify what the differences literally are. And if you think that, okay, I'm just going to read it once, I'm going to focus on the other nine subjects and just go and nail ethics, it doesn't happen. There are people who've cleared exams like CA and ACC and they also have a tough time with ethics uh, in level one. So that is first the, the tip number one. Do not just read it once. It's going to be really complex. By the way, guys, hold on. Uh, we've been asking all this and most of you all have been adhering to it. But still, 89% of our viewers are not subscribing to the channel. So please click subscribe and then go on with the video. And uh, tip number two is do not start your preparation of level one with ethics. Leave ethics for the end. Uh, leave it for just a month before the exams. And uh, the reason here is again because it's, it's a little too much to remember. It's a little complicated even though it's easy on the first read. To retain it, it's not that simple. Um, so if you learn it too much in advance, you'll probably forget it by the time of the exams. Again, uh, we apply this at Zell. Our, in our um, training, the uh, entire academic plan that we have for our students, we leave ethics for the end. So the same suggestion applies to you guys. The third subject is F FRA, so financial reporting and analysis. And this is approximately 13 to 17 percent in terms of weightage. Now, the tips here. First of all, if you are a qualified CA or ACCA, this subject should be relatively easy for you. However, uh, 
CFA level one FRA contains IFRS and US GAAP both. So if you are for example a CE or an ACC, you can pick up IFRS easily, but you will struggle a little bit with US GAAP. So don't underestimate the, the difficulty of this. An example is that under IFRS, uh, a CE or an ACC will know that inventory, the inventory methods allowed under IAS2 is a FIFO and weighted average. But US GAAP, the inventory accounting standard, even allows for LIFO. So these distinctions you need to know. Now, if you're just a graduate, BCom, BAF, BFM, etc., BMS, etc., for you guys, this FRA is all about accounting. So it's not that difficult, uh, but you will have to invest a little time and do this because in level one, after ethics, this has the highest weightage. Uh, and lastly, a, a way for you guys to learn and, and learn from context, learn a little bit from uh, from the experiential learning perspective, our suggestion is that um, find a few financial statements, search online for public financial statements, which are created under IFRS and under US GAAP. So we've listed down a few companies which you can probably look up and uh, download their financial statements. So you just have some context, read how the notes to accounts are created, read the disclosures and hopefully that the real uh, balance sheet, real cash flow statements, real profit and loss accounts will give you enough context that will help you study and retain better from the FRA perspective. And lastly, economics. So economics has 8 to 12% again, similar to quants. Uh, so first of all, I know uh, a lot of people studying CFA level 1, they dislike eco because it's a dry subject. It doesn't have too much of number crunching. Um, and like ethics, people generally put it low on priority. Now, here's the thing. Our suggestion is number one, it's not just mugging up or rote learning a bunch of formulas or standards. You really again have to sit and break down concepts. Advantage is once you do that, the uh, eco, eco is very easy to score. You know, the, the, it's the low hanging fruit of CFA level one where you will be the marks are up for grabs. So, uh, for example, if you learn elasticity of demand, uh, the questions are very simple. You have to calculate the elasticity of demand and you just know the formula, put it and you score your marks. So that would sort of compensate for the for the, the boredom that you might face for eco. Also, again, from the preparation perspective, you'll see a lot of graphs. It's again our nature when you're thinking of a finance qualification like CFA to skip all this. It's not tested as much in the form of graphs and also all the more reason you want to skip it. However, the real or the best way to learn eco is by understanding the graphs since the visual representation and more than anything a lot of things that you read would be well represented in the form of a graph and that gives you a lot of information from just one visual frame in your mind right so preparation wise again it's these are those things that the learning curve is very high in the beginning so it might take you a lot of it might make you really uncomfortable to go through so much like ethics, like eco, a lot of you've got to go through this boredom or through this whole tedious process of sitting and breaking things down, learning it uh, in the beginning. But it's completely worth it because this part will not take you as long as if you just try to rote learn, go in the exam, try to fluke it, uh, and then probably unfortunately not scoring well and passing the exam. So not worth it. So um, do spend time on eco. It's completely fine if you're a little bored, but it's easy to score. And I think that's what makes it worth it. So guys, with that being said, um, this was our overall CFA video for, for session one tips. And to watch the session two tips, please click on the video now.